And if we scroll down here, we're looking for job 14 and job 15. So we're gonna scroll over all the way over to our job sheets over here. And we have job 14, which is uh, 186, uh, 000, and job 15, I'm gonna hold down control, which is 314,000. That adds up to 500,000. So 500,000 is the amount that we're gonna transfer from work in process to finished goods. So I'm gonna scroll all the way back over here. So both the debit, 500,000 to finished goods and the credit, credits of 500,000 to work in process. That's the transaction. Let's make this smaller on the taskbar like so and scroll over here and post this out. So we're gonna post the finished goods here. Here it is on the trial balance. Here's the finished goods on the general ledger. We are on the debit side in U18 uh, equals pointing to that 500,000. That brings the balance up in the debit direction. Then we're looking for work in process. Here it is on the journal entry. Here it is on the trial balance and work in process is right here. We are on the credit side this time, reducing work in process in cell V12 equals and pointing to 500,000, bringing our balance down. Now note that what we did is we brought down the work in process to 260. We're gonna have to do something with our backup account now to, in, order to, in order to back that number up in, in our jobs cost sheets. Because if we go over here to the job cost sheets, we still see the job cost sheets here. We still see them. So we have to indicate in some way on the job cost sheets that, hey, the, you know, we transferred these jobs. They're, they're no longer in work and process. They shouldn't be included in this number. They shouldn't be in here. So how do we take it out of there? Well, there's different softwares that'll do that. But in this case, we could say, well, you know, this is no longer an open job. We could say that it is now a closed job. Maybe just highlight that the fact that it's now closed like so, and therefore it needs to be removed from the, the yellow area here. So we could say this is this job is closed. We'll make it green like that. So this should only include the yellow jobs which are open, indicating that they are open. So this one's open. Maybe this should be yellow too. Okay, so I'm gonna double click on that then. That means that or we could just we could just delete it and I'm gonna say that the new entry should just be this job. That's all that should be in there. And that means that that now ties out to the work in process. So the green jobs are now closed out and the, the only open jobs that are being backed up by this cost sheet now are the ones that have not yet been transferred to finished goods being uh, the 260. So we can see that 260 just includes that job. That 260 is what is in work and process. And of course we could see what's in finished uh, goods too, the 500 being in this case, the 186 and uh, the 314 as up to the 500. Okay, and then once we transfer it out of there, I'm gonna say it's it's shipped. All right, we also see the uh, work in process and the finished goods over here on the trial balance respectively at the 260 and 500. All right, let's make it larger again, back up to 100% on the side, scrolling back over to the left. We are now on the next transaction, which says that we uh, on 131 record sale of job 14. So we sold job 14 for 380,000. So we are on 131. Okay, so we sold a job. Now we can think of the first half of the sale just like any type of sale. We made a sale. What happens when we make a sale? Well, uh, we think, well, is cash affected? In this case, did we sell it for cash? Yeah, we did. So cash is affected. Cash is going up by the, one thir by the 380. So cash has a debit balance. We're gonna make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which in this case is another debit. So I'm gonna copy cash. I'm gonna put that up in H. 13 right click paste one two three and then we're going to credit income or in this case sales so this is the actual sale that happened so we're down here in sales uh sales have credit balances we're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it which is another credit just like any sale this is just a normal transaction for any type of business where we we um, generated revenue and got cash for it we increased cash we increased the uh revenue account cash is being debited revenue is being credited and I just did the wrong thing. I'm gonna right click and copy and our revenue account being called sales in this case because we sell stuff and we have the amount of 380. Now a lot of people are gonna get confused on the 380. We're saying, well, how did we come up with a 380, that arbitrary number? Why don't we, I mean, don't we have to look at the job cost sheet in some way to think about how much uh, we sold it for? And notice that we might get the sales price from the job cost sheet, meaning we might have a, a, a rule that we're saying, hey, whatever the cost of the project is, 
we're going to mark it up by 30%, meaning we might use the job cost sheet to come up with the sales price. But the, the cost is what we've been tracking, not the sales price. The sales price should, of course, be higher than the cost unless we underbid the job. But uh, notice that in a lot of problems, uh, they, they might just give you the sales price and, and or they might not even talk about the sales price and just talk about the, the movement of the inventory. So when we start thinking about the inventory, it's a lot of times it gets confusing because people ignore, we tend to ignore the sales side of things and lose sight of the fact that uh, the sales uh, is going to be slightly different than what we've been working on. We've been working on tracking the cost the whole time. So we might use the cost in order to come up with the sales price, but many problems might just give you the sales price. And then we have to record the other half of the journal entry, which is similar to the other half of any journal entry if we we uh, were a merchandising company and that is that we have now reduced the inventory meaning our inventory now being the finished inventory because we're not going to sell the stuff that's in process unless someone wants to finish it themselves and we're going to like sell it at a discount or something but otherwise we're probably going to sell the inventory that has been completed and it has a debit balance we're going to make it go down so i'm going to copy that i'm going to skip a line and skip another line to put it on the bottom so we're going to credit that and if we're going to credit the finished goods, then we're going to debit the expense related to us uh, giving up the inventory. That expense is finally called cost of goods sold. So just like in a merchandising company, we're selling the inventory, we're expensing it in the form of cost of goods sold. So I'm going to copy the cost of goods sold. I'm going to paste that in cell H16, right click, paste one, two, three. So we're gonna to have to get this information from, of course, the job cost sheet. So this is the number that's gonna come from the job cost sheet, the reduction in the inventory and the expensing of the cost of goods sold. So we, we sold job 14. Let's scroll over to our job cost sheet and see what's in uh, job 14. Here it is. I'm gonna say now it's closed. So I'm gonna make it a different color again. Let's make it like blue, maybe cool. blue is closed. So it's no longer here. We're gonna say it's closed or shipped. It's been shipped, meaning it's closed. All right, so now we have it over, over there and the amount in there is the 186. So notice that at this point in time, we're finally gonna expense all the 